What's up, future respiratory therapists? I received an email not too long ago with a question in it that I want to make available to all of you. Okay, so here's the question. It says, my textbook explained that when a patient breathes 100% oxygen, it will increase the difference between alveolar and arterial PO2, and I'm confused as to how. The objective of this video is to make you, or to help you understand how that happens and why it happens, okay? So let's talk about this um, just on a general sense before we get started. You have to understand that the, ox the, the, the lungs, the alveoli, they diffuse gas at a normal rate, okay? But it's not, it's not that all oxygen that is taken into the alveoli actually diffuse into arterial blood. That's not the way it works, okay? There is uh, a small percentage of oxygen that does not diffuse, and we're talking healthy lungs here, does not diffuse into arterial blood. Now, we know this as being this formula right here the A to A. Now this normal is greater than 75%. Okay. Now what this tells us is, is that in the normal healthy lung, greater than 75% of the A to A difference, meaning, meaning 75% of the oxygen that comes into the alveoli actually diffuses into arterial blood greater than 75%. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use a, just a standard number. We're going to go with 80%, okay? And we're going to show you how this works and why you have a larger 8A difference with 100% oxygen than what you do breathing room air, which is 21% oxygen. Now to do this, I'm going to draw two alveoli up here. And this is the pulmonary blood flow passing by this alveoli, okay? Now, this alveoli here, we'll call it letter A, and we'll call this one B, is breathing 21%. This one is breathing 100%, okay? Now, what we have to do here is we have to ask ourselves, what is the partial pressure inside of that alveoli for patient A, who's breathing 21%, and patient B, who's breathing 100%. Well, to do that, we have to know the alveolar air equation. So the alveolar air equation says barometric pressure, we're just gonna take 760 minus water vapor pressure, multiply times our FiO2, and then we have to subtract out for alveolar CO2. We do that by multiplying our PaCO2 times our respiratory quotient, some people say divide by 0.8. Some people say multiply by 1.25. They'll give you the same answer. That's not a concern, okay? Now, because I'm gonna run out of room, we are going to plug these numbers into this equation. Now for CO2, we're just going to assume that we have a normal of 40. Now for FiO2, right here, we have to plug in 0.21. Now when we do this, okay, we're gonna get somewhere around right at 100, okay? So let me, let me, let me do the math real quick. Um, we're gonna take 760 minus 47, which is gonna give us 713 times 0.221 equals 149.7. And then from that, we're gonna subtract 40 times 1.25, which is 50, and we're gonna get 99.7, now I'm just gonna round it up to 100, okay? So when we do this math right here, we see that our P big AO2 equals 100, 99.7. This is for patient A. Now what this tells us is that a person breathing at sea level, room air with a normal CO2, means that the partial pressure of oxygen inside the alveoli not the arterial blood, but inside the alveoli is 100 approximately, okay? Now, if we just change one number here, and we change 0.21 to 1.0, what we're gonna get is 713 times one is 713, minus 50 is 663. 
That means that this patient breathing 100% at sea level with a normal CO2 of 40 has a P big A O2 of 663. This is P big A O2. Okay? That is the partial pressure of oxygen inside the alveoli. Now remember I told you when I started this video that we're going to use an A to A of 80%. That would be normal. Okay? Well, watch this. If 80% of this 100 actually diffuses into the pulmonary capillaries, then we're going to get an arterial oxygenation. Now we're talking P little AO2. See, this is where this all starts. You have to understand the difference in P big AO2, which is alveolar pressure of oxygen, versus P little AO2, which is arterial partial pressure of oxygen. Okay? So, if 80% of 100 gets into arterial circulation, then we have a P little a O2 of 80 millimeters of mercury. Now, if 80% of 663 gets into our arterial circulation, then we have a PaO2 of 530. Okay, so that's where we are right now. We've had both, this patient is breathing 21%, this patient is breathing 100%. Maybe it's the same patient, it doesn't even matter. The same set of lungs breathing different concentrations of oxygens have different PaO2s, P big AO2s, which results in difference in, in variances in the P little AO2s. Obviously, somebody breathing 100% healthy lungs is going to have a much greater arterial concentration of blood in terms of partial pressure. Proven right here, 530 millimeters of mercury versus 80 millimeters of mercury. Now here's the answer to your question. Why is the A to A difference greater in the patient breathing 100% than 21%? Well, let's look at it. If we get rid of this and we ask ourselves, what is our a to A difference for patient A and patient B, then here's what we find. Patient A is 20 millimeters of mercury. That means that 100 was in the alveoli, partial pressure in the, arterial, in the arterial circulation was 80, that gives us a difference of 20, okay? Now, when we come over here and we do 663, 663 minus 530, we see here that our A to A difference is 133. Well, why is that? Does the patient that's breathing 100% oxygen, they have a larger A to A difference? Are their lungs working less efficiently than the person breathing 21% oxygen with an A to A difference of 20? Does the A to A difference by itself does it tell you that there is a problem, a diffusion problem at the lungs? Absolutely not. It, it is an indicator of that, but using it alone and to understand this concept, it doesn't answer the question. Because right now you would say, oh, well, this person clearly has, clearly is, 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 is diffusing less oxygen than the person breathing 21% because their 8A difference is only 20. It's not the true. It's not true. Look, it's all about the A to A ratio. A patient that diffuses 80% of oxygen from the alveoli into arterial circulation will diffuse 21% at this rate and 100% at this rate. The reason the A to A difference is greater at 100% is because 80% of 663 creates a greater difference than 80% of 100. There's going to be more left over. Not all oxygen that comes into the alveoli diffuses into arterial circulation. And that's what you have to understand. There's always a small percentage that does not find its way into arterial circulation. So it's all about percentages. That's all it is. So my point here is, is understanding normal 8A ratio 
And then understanding that this is why we have a greater 8 a difference on 100% than what we do on 21%. I hope this makes sense. If nothing else, I just hope it offered really good formula content for you to look at and go, okay, I see what he's saying. And more importantly, what are those formulas telling me? When you calculate for P big AO2 or when you calculate for the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen, that's the alveolar air equation. The 8A gradient will tell you how much did not diffuse into arterial circulation. And then the 8A ratio will tell you at what percentage of the gas that came into the alveoli actually made its way into, and when I say gas, I mean oxygen, made its way into arterial circulation. Okay, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, we've got a lot of subscribers coming in right now. That's probably because school is starting. Um, but if you're somebody watching this channel and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Be notified. Turn your bell notifications on so you know when I upload a new video. All I'm here to do is to help and to try to provide a little bit of educational support. So hit the subscribe button, please. Best wishes.